You're listening to the Multiverse Fancast, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. All right, then. On with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Multiverse Fancast. If you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and basically anywhere you guys get podcasts. You can also find more content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but our other shows like MF Uncensored and Cinematic Adventures. And you can also find Rob's reviews, He Didn't Like Moon Knight. Come at him, bro. And you can also find some of our articles and as well as our brand new Misfit Faction store. And uh, if you guys are looking for a little merch, a little, little shopping, that's the place to go to buy the one t-shirt for the show. The Multiverse Fan Cast. That's not true. That's true. But anyway, there's a Misfit Faction shirt. That's true. So, as always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul, and we have a packed studio today. It's so what packed, what? we Woo-hoo. had to zoom people in and share microphones, <laughs> and it is, it's going to be, it's it's gonna be an interesting one. That. So, first up, we have Ronnie. Ronnie, how are you? I'm doing swell, sir. <laughs> how are you doing? Oh, just living the dream. I do have to apologize for uh, the delay in the episodes, because that is mine and producer Melanie's fault. We did uh, succumb to the the infamous COVID, as we were, like, getting tickets to go see Doctor Strange, <laughs> as we were getting ready to, like, go see this movie, we had to quarantine. But anyway, we're doing okay now. We also have in the studio from Cinematic Adventures, Sean. Sean, how are you today? What's up there? I can't hear what Rob is saying at all, but it'll be a fun episode here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have headphones. <laughs> we're running out of stuff. I gave I gave Rob the headphones. Why would you give him the headphones? I panicked. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even using the headphones. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And we also have a very special guest from uh, YouTube sensation, Magic the Gathering, not Magic Card Tricks, the guy, <laughs> BlindBat8719. I always get the numbers mixed go. up. No worries. Our dear friend, Brendan. Brendan, how are you today? I'm doing well, Paul. I'm doing very well. <laughs> I can hear how you're doing right now. So <laughs> just, just, clear, just trying to clear, clear it out. Just trying to clear it That's out. That's all good. Let it's it all good. And clear it out. Let it rain. So for some reason, Ronnie's also very musical tonight, and it's going to be very strange. There's going to be a lot oh, of... Well, yes, it is going to be strange. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No oh. Oh. You set him up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there, there's also going to be a fair amount of overlapping chatter, so just bear with us, because obviously we <laughs> we'll, have a very full studio. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> we will not. That's, that's there, my joke. There, there is no fixing and it that, in post. And that sultry voice you're hearing is from our Zoom channel. Hey Rob. Rob, Rob via Zoom. Hello, <laughs> those hello people in multiverse land. How are you all doing today? Yeah, better uh, than Zombie Strange. Better than Ooh, yeah. better than Moon Knight, if you ask Rob. I can't wait for our Moon Knight episode. I, yeah, can we avoid any spoilers of Moon Knight? Or the only the only spoiler about Moon Knight that I'm going to say is that Rob didn't really dig it. Okay, because I haven't started no, it yet. He's I, one of my I'm with you, Rob. Favorite. Don't worry. Obscure oh, good. Marvel right. people. So nobody wants to point out dig it on the show about ancient Egypt and archaeology. Okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. You know, just we'll, <laughs> we'll work through it. But uh, we are talking Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness tonight. So as typical, the movie's only been out for about a week. Most of the uh, the Misfit crew here saw it the night opening night. Unfortunately, producer Mel and I had to wait the following week. We were very lucky about spoilers, and we want to give you guys the same courtesy. And we're gonna do maybe. Five ten minutes of non-spoiler discussion, just our initial thoughts, what we uh, liked about the movie without giving anything away, things that maybe we didn't like. Again, we'll we'll try and be as vague as possible, and we'll do a full spoiler warning and give you guys our our full breakdown. But before we do that, as always, we got news, and I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Zoom himself. Okay. When first of all, I want to ask: When did you and producer Mel go out to see uh, Multiverse? When did you end up going? Last night, literally seven. Oh wow! Seven o'clock <laughs> last, just night. last night. Well, we oh, had, wow. we were we were pretty sick. Like I, as much yeah. as I, I don't, we're downplaying the whole thing. Mel and I were were sick for days. Couldn't get out of bed, and obviously we didn't want wow. anybody else to get sick on our account. So we waited till the very end of our quarantine to do it. Well, we appreciate that. Mm. So in the news, we've got three items. So I'll start with the non-Marvel stuff, so that way we can ease into Spider-Man and uh, some other things with uh, John Watts. First of all, Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, and Naomi have all been canceled on the CW. That might be the death knell that you hear ringing 
for the Arrowverse. Mm-hmm. We it might be all over from here. And uh, I was never, uh, to be honest. And I know, I know, Paul, you've watched a couple of these things. I didn't watch any of Naomi or Batwoman. You know, I was a Legends fan for a number of years, and then it was just getting a little too goofy for me. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems to be about it for the CW verse. So for those of you guys, and this was actually told to me by our friend uh, John Fatakis from he uh, does the Hey Pal What's New podcast. If you guys follow us, he's he's constantly posting on our stuff. So uh, make sure you guys give him a listen. Their show is fantastic. But he was the one that told me that apparently because the CW is trying to uh, be sold, like they're trying to sell the CW basically. They're running out of lease space for uh, the Warner Brothers lots that they used to use. So rather than re-up their leases and spend money on lots and studios and all that they're just kind of letting certain things die but they did order two series gotham knights the winchesters yes. Uh, yes. a walker prequel and I, I think there was one and obviously superman and lois and the flash are still coming back next season well my thought too is also that if you're gonna <laughs> sell your product then you might as well make it as viable and, and as valuable as possible So, you know, cancel some of the stuff that has been around for a while that's just sucking in money and, and, you know, put to a series some stuff that has a lot of potential to it, like, you know, the Winchesters and Gotham Knights. And doesn't Gotham... Why'd they review The Flash? Oh, yeah. I I think Gotham Knights, doesn't that have uh, Misha uh, Barton in it? Misha Misha Barton from uh, the 90s? No. Misha Collins from Supernatural. (laughs) Oh, man. oh, he's playing Harvey my Dent. Gray Flash. hair is showing. Is this, yes, Barton. he's playing Harvey Dent. Oh, this is Gotham Knights. I'm mixing it with Arkham Knights. Isn't there like a Gotham Knights? There is a video game coming out called yeah. called Gotham That's Knights. That's Arkham okay. Knights. Yes, yeah, okay. Ar- Gotham Knights. Yeah, yeah. very um, strange. Right. How both are happening. So my other two things are, uh, first of all, John Watts has exited directing Fantastic Four. He said he kind of needs to take a break for a, from superheroes for a little while. However, now they are dangling. Uh, Spider-Man 4 in front of him and wanting him to do that. So there's rumors that he may pick that one up. So right now, I don't believe Fantastic Four has a director attached to it at all. John, Cr- John Krasinski think- would be fantastic at that. To, to be honest <laughs> with you, I, I was actually thinking that in a serious way. Yeah, Because I, I think he's really good mm-hmm. at directorial stuff and everything. Too. Yeah, he's proven himself. <laughs> and then the final bit I have is a little bit linked to what we're talking about today, and that is uh, Sam Raimi recently talked a little bit about what Spider-Man 4 in his original trilogy was going to be. We knew a couple things, but uh, he confirmed a few things, and he said it was going to be uh, the main baddies were going to be Craven the Hunter and Mysterio, and he had fully intended to uh, cast his buddy Bruce Campbell as Mysterio, which would have explained how he was able to show up in the th- trilogy. And uh, But to be honest, you know, it didn't happen, and to, I, I have to say, I, again, no spoilers, I think Bruce Campbell might be our best cameo of the night. Mm, no. Easy. No, easy. All right. Any other news? That's it? That is it. All right. So before we get into our spoilers, obviously we're going to start with a very non-spoilery, non-specific. But first, since Brendan was not here for any of our episodes, I didn't think that one through before I started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, we did an episode, our last episode was kind of talking about Doctor Strange and and his journey throughout the MCU and kind of where he started, how he progressed and leading up to this. So just uh, some quick thoughts since you're the guest on uh, Doctor Strange and the MCU. I know I'm putting you on the spot. That's okay. No, well, first I want to say I I did listen to the episode. I very much enjoyed your guys, him going, talking about his, his points for the thing. Uh, and I think I agreed with a lot of what you guys said. I think with, I mean, Doctor Strange is kind of, I think he's coming more into his own now, whether you want to say he's now taking over as the Iron Man mentor role a bit, or the new quote-unquote Iron Man of this character, because again, they are very simple. But I, I, always, I thought the first film was fun, and then it was kind of cool seeing him pop up again. He was Because I always thought of him more as a background character in the comic books in the first place. Mm. So then that's kind of why we see it as now. It'd be kind of cool if they can expand more with him being like, a defender or that was that was always his big group i think and i think he joined the west coast avengers at one point but i don't think they're going to try to split the avengers into two groups anymore or ever really but yeah i thought he's a fun character and i think he has a different take and you know i know he caused a little bit of conflict by now actually confirming that magic existed when everybody was wondering if magic existed with the existence of thor but yeah i, I don't know where else to say with it he's just a very he's a fun character to see and it's a different take on things and 
I think the hand gestures look really cool. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fair. That's <laughs> I fair. think you mentioned them too about the lack of incantations, and yeah, that definitely that was something that was the I think they added a little bit more to this, a little more of the magic ritual stuff that made it. I think this movie make it look a lot cooler. But yeah, it's cool when there's a fun incantation to stay along with the stuff. Yeah, I th- I think there's just something just something badass about it. All right, so Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. We're gonna start. Because I'm most curious, I want to hear Ronnie's non-spoiler thoughts first. Oh man, I gotta go start. All right, I was I to me this movie was a little bit of a letdown. That could have been my fault of having high expectations, possibly, but it, it fell below what I was expecting. You know, obviously the visuals were all there. Visuals were great and everything. You saw the Sam Raimi you know, aspect of, you know, his visual style and everything. But, you know, it just felt flat. There's a lot of different things that I thought were kind of stupid, cheesy, and everything. So I'm I'm trying to think of words and sentences to not spoil anything. It's usually a podcast word. You know, well, no, I said to spoil anything. I know, I was trying to get in before you said it. But to me, honestly, the best part of this movie was all the different cameos we got. All right. And let's go across the Zoom bridge to Rob. Rob, non-spoiler initial thoughts of Multiverse of Madness. So I I will start off by saying that I, I was a little concerned when I started watching it because I did feel that it's because it, it starts right in the middle of things. And it was a little wonky. And I was like, oh, no, this doesn't feel right. And and I have to say, it actually took me about 15 minutes or so or even 20 minutes before it really hit its stride. And then from then on out, it was just fantastic. It was a lot of fun. It really validated everything I was hoping for in terms of having Sam Raimi's fingerprints all over it. I mean, it was, you know, having just recently rewatched Drag Me to Hell and Evil Dead 2 and Dark Man, it was like, ah, yes, I can see how those things are coming into this and and how he's using a lot of the same styles. And, and, you know, there was the snap zooms, there was the the Dutch angles. There were so many things that Sam Raimi brought to it. And it it was a lot of fun. It, it evolved the character for me. The cameos were fun. I thought it was a fairly complex plot. I, I knew very little going into this. Like I didn't even know who the antagonist was. So that was a wonderful surprise. I, I had a blast with it. And like everyone else is saying, the visuals are just amazing. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move over to Sean. Sean, non-spoiler initial thoughts. Initial thoughts for me, I, as Ronnie said, I was a little let down by the movie as a whole. There were some very good moments with it visually. I was very intrigued by Sam Raimi taking the director's chair uh, what 15 years after uh, Spider-Man 3 the cameos as we'll get into obviously with the spoilers were good but I was expecting more I don't know why maybe I just I thought for some reason the way they were hyping this I was really expecting a lot more cameos than we got but um love Benedict Cumberbatch and just for the most part anything he's in I'll, I'll give a shot to so I enjoyed him and so I said Scarlett Johansson. What's her name? Elizabeth Olsen. Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen. She was very, very good. Mm-hmm. Continuing, you know, the, the great work she did on uh, WandaVision. So. Yeah. So we'll do, see. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more, but do you think WandaVision helped helped with yes. Scarlet Witch? Well, this? absolutely, because you see, obviously, what she went through to get to the point she's at mm-hmm. in this movie. I mean, if they didn't have WandaVision, it would have been like, wait, what? Yeah. What happened to her? So it... You, it definitely, you know, it shows, you know, what she went through in WandaVision and, you know, the effects that led to her in this movie and basically, you know, what drives her through this movie. So when we'll get to that a little later. All right. And last but certainly not least, Brendan. I had a good time with this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. You forgot yourself. I, I, I think this, I had a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed the movie. I had a good time with it. Probably be more fanboyish than you guys. I can't be as, I haven't gotten to that critical of that. I can't do the, the this dissection of the movie as bad as, as well as you guys can, but I had, a, I had a good time with it. And I think uh, to your point, Rob, a little bit, just I was reading something that did, the movie did a great job with its marketing to do a bait and switch that they, the marketing thought it was going to be one thing and ended up being something else. And I think it was better for it. I know a lot of times when they do that, usually people get more upset, but I think it did a good job of you think the movie's going to be like this. Cause I remember telling Rob that I think it's going to be the fugitive version. It's basically Dr. Oh, right. Strange is the That's fugitive. Right. I forgot about your And text. I was very disappointed yes. when it wasn't that, but I think I was very happy with what we did get. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it, it, it wasn't like, and it, like, I think a lot of us speaking of that bait and switch, like I thought that giant green one eyed creature was the main bad guy. Yeah. And it, it wasn't at all. It, it, that's like the first 15 or 20 minutes. And then it's, you know, it, it could have easily been a, you know, typical boss battle with, uh, you know, escalating, but it wasn't, it was, you, we had an empathetic antagonist that you, you actually kind of felt bad for because of what she went through. Right. So I'll go last just because I, I just saw the movie. Like I, I am the most recent viewer. So they have had some time to kind of sit and marinate with it and think about it and, and see what other people have been posting about it. Not that it would, you know, affect their opinions, but also like it, it may just make them see things differently or affect their opinions. Stupid Paul. <laughs> but anyway, for me, it I was very excited to see it. I know the rest of the Misfits were very good about not – saying anything as you know i got a couple of text messages just kind of you know mostly it was like how are you guys doing we enjoyed the movie that was pretty much it so wasn't for me though. not from ronnie ronnie did not say that <laughs> but that's uh, how you were though yes <laughs> but i didn't say anything about how i enjoyed the movie yeah. No, I, I didn't say, I just told Paul, I texted him, I said, whatever you do, stay off the internet until you go see the movie. Yes, yeah, so fun fact, there was only one thing that was spoiled for me. Only one cameo that was spoiled for me, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. The best cameo. Yeah, eh, but the, the one I was most excited about, yes, I'll, I'll say that. But we just saw it, it's, it's still very fresh. It did not blow me away the same way No Way Home did. Which is, it, there's a very big, for me anyway, a perceived lack of direction that, that the Marvel Universe is in right now. And it's got multi directions. Yeah. Well, you watch, you watch the Infinity Saga, and everything was leading towards yeah. Thanos and these Infinity Stones. Yes. That was it's the, a yeah. very, it's tight yep. storytelling. Very tight. Now we have no clue really what they're trying to do and what they're building towards even like they don't we, even know they don't even like. mention any of the stuff uh, yeah. from loki like this would be the perfect time to mention the stuff from loki you know obviously they mentioned wandavision and the effects the ending of yeah. wandavision does directly yeah. lead into this movie they mentioned westview yep but yeah like loki's not mentioned you know he's in new york like there's no mention of the new captain america flying around like right. nothing and it, it's very jarring and it's it's a little worrisome because as much as I love a good solo movie and a good you know individual story, I also like we go to these yeah. movies to see the big story too and it feels like there is none. And give give, give me some tie in to the MCU. Don't just make a outside movie when you know this is supposed to be part of your new phase. It yeah. doesn't. Yeah. This didn't it, seem like part of the new phase. Cause, well, cause it, it just seems like they keep introducing more and more new characters too. You know, with with like you know the Eternals, with you know Shang Chi, with, you know, and it doesn't seem to be tying together. And and I've read a lot of critiques that Phase Four is just a little wonky because we it doesn't seem to have a a, a plan. I'm sure there is a plan, and in retrospect, we'll see it. But at least with phase three, we kind of saw where it was going because, you know, they teased it throughout. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now it's all about the fallout from the snap. Like that just seems to be the big continuity theme. This to me is the new phase one where it's just a lot mm -hmm. of backstory kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then phase five is going to be like phase two where you start building oh, maybe. towards the big bad, whether it's Kang or, you know, whoever. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like though, like uh, I'm trying to think back to the, the end credits. I always felt like the end credits were great about kind of giving you talking about the, the big overarching thing. That was the hint, like, oh wow, this is where things are heading towards. You know, again with the famous, you know, yeah. you know, when Samuel L. Jackson showing up and like the Avengers initiative, like okay, there's the groundwork. And then I think the next one they talk about finding the hammer in Captain America, which leads to Thor a little bit. Which maybe that's more like with this with with, with this yeah. this cameo, but. I, yeah, I do agree that you. It's I've read some stuff about what, and which is more spoilers. I'm not talking saying what it is, but that the, some of the ideas that are presented in this movie is what may may be the big event that they're trying to go towards, and they're just again still letting the groundwork. But you're right, it doesn't feel like it'd be nice if they had it. Like we're gonna definitely here's a strong hint we're gonna go towards this, but we gotta lay a lot of groundwork to get you there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. I, I rewatched No Way Home this week before because i thought it was going to play a lot more into this movie and i was shocked to see how inconsequential it really was to multiverse of madness brief mention like the yeah. yeah the trailers had us believe that like 
he broke the universe because of what he did with Peter Parker. And it actually had nothing to do with that at all. Yeah. So let's let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to go full on spoiler discussion. But first, a quick break. Today's episode is brought to you by Ray's Energy Drinks from Rep Sports. Whether you're trying to crush your afternoon workout or just need a little extra pick-me-up, Ray's Energy is just the boost that you're going to need. So if you go to repsports.com and any product that you order, enter the code MISFIT89 at checkout to receive 15% off. Anything that you guys buy from that store helps our network grow, and we fully, fully appreciate everything you guys do. That's MISFIT89 at checkout, repsports.com. All right, we are back, and this is uh, your official spoiler warning. If you guys have not seen oh. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, don't like don't keep listen. listening. All right, <laughs> so this is again last chance spoilers. for any sort of spoilers. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There's your spoiler warning. Are we that sounds uncomfortable. Up? Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so let's start off. We're gonna go uh, maybe character by character first, just to kind of talk about. Things that we liked about the character arcs, because there there are some really yeah. there are there is some good storytelling with uh, some of the characters in this. Some characters kind of get lost in the wayside, but otherwise, let's let's start with good old Doctor Strange, right? Which so, one? The <laughs> yeah. So let me let me start with my very first disappointment. They killed Defender Strange in the first minute of this movie, basically. Yeah, I would have really enjoyed seeing him interact with our Doctor Strange. Because, like, there, so basically the idea is there's several different universes, and this girl, America Chavez, is being chased by some unknown pro- antagonist. Yes. And we do find out that eventually it is Wanda, which is a great scene, and yeah, we're going to talk yeah, about that, that in a second. Cool. But, um, so basically, she, Doctor Strange is trying to save her, but then tries to just be like, no, I'll just take your power, and, you know, we'll be okay, and you, you, you die. You just die. So he does die in the very opening scene. It's it's a it's a little excessive. Did, yeah, I'm saying. Did we think we were gonna get like we got the three? Did we think we were gonna see more strangers? Like, do we think this would be like like six or seven strangers in this movie? Originally, I, I would have actually enjoyed a movie more of him traveling to different worlds and just interacting with different Doctor Strangers. Well, like what? we I had four. That Technically, there was four in this one. Yeah. We only see three. We see the fourth one die. Mm, and we see Defender Strange. Oh and no! We, I did my math. We right. see Doctor. I double counted. I, I double counted Defender Strange oh, and Zombie, Zombie Strange. Zombie. Yeah, Zombie. Zombie. Yeah. I forgot because I, I was thinking the eight three eight guy. That was the yeah. one I was. Yeah. yeah. And then I I will say one of my biggest disappointments was that that was not the what if Doctor Strange at the end. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the one I forgot about that guy. Sin- yeah. Sinister, Strange Sinister Strange is how he was has right. how he was dubbed. Yeah. But I was very disappointed that that was not the what if Doctor Strange. Yeah, and, that would yeah. be cool. That'd been a nice good tie in. Well, they did Captain Carter, but it wasn't the Captain Carter from What If. Nope. Just like no. how they did Black Bolt and, uh, again, spoilers, Black Bolt, Professor Xavier, and Reed Richards are all from Earth 838, and they may have counterparts on our Earth. They may not. And they do. Who knows? But well, I guess our What If is mut- if mutants didn't exist. <laughs> That's the What If of uh, the Marvel, the MC- Marvel MCU at the moment, at least this universe. I am shocked they did not take the opportunity to finally say mutant. I was oh, very surprised, point. yeah, because they they called Pietro and Wanda enhanced. Yes. That was their yeah. their workaround that they they called them enhanced. Yes, and for all we know, and they Doc- call the Inhumans the Inhumans. Were, were well, Rob? Were well, you not shocked? Really were you shocked to actually see <laughs> the same actor from the show play yes, Black Bolt? In fact, I think Lauren and I might have been, and maybe you guys were the only people in the audience that were like, "Oh my God, it's Black Bolt!" I had yeah, no idea. A- Anson, <laughs> Anson Mount, I think his name yeah. is. Um, it's the I, Tuning I, Fork Man. They actually gave him a comic accurate costume. That I was, was cool. It, it, and, yeah. it, and it worked. I was yes. kind of surprised. So Doctor Strange's story throughout this is he's trying to find. It's weird because, like, he gave Peter Parker so much grief about having two separate lives, but he's now – he's this famous superhero. Like, people know who he is. Yeah. And they know that magic's real, and they know that he was the cause of the blip, basically. It's yeah, a great yeah. scene with him and the doctor from the first movie um, where he's like, hey, are you sure there was no other ways you could have – because, like, I lost yeah. my cats. Doctor Nick. And my brother. And my brother. <laughs> but the two cats were what yeah. he mentioned first. Yeah. Now – 
any thoughts on Dr. Sh- and by the end of the movie, he takes on the relu- – first he takes on the reluctant protector role, which is strange because he's like a superhero. And then by the end of the movie, he's he's much more lighter and he's you know finally able to make his peace with Christine. And then he grows a third eye that we just think – you know forget about in the mid credit scene basically. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about Dr. Strange's journey. We'll start with Mr. Zoom himself because he's eating and it's funnier. So we're going to start with Rob on your thoughts on very briefly about Dr. Strange's arc throughout this movie. Um, I liked this arc better than I did in the first Dr. Strange. The first Dr. Strange was very much an Iron Man arc. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the really cocky, you know, very cocksure individual who's a, a professional at everything that he does. And he's great at everything that he does, goes through something bad and then comes out higher as a result at the end. And it was neat because I felt... Like this, this film felt, you know, okay, does it have its flaws? Absolutely. And we'll talk about those, I'm sure. But I have to say, I thought it was more creative than any other of the films, maybe barring Ragnarok. And and I think some of that comes down to his arc. It, it, it is seeing him develop and, and, and go through, you know, so many different phases of uh, loss. I, I, okay, having said that, I, I don't know about you guys, but I never bought the Chris storyline all that much. In this says. movie or in general? I, oh, Both. In general. Hmm. Yeah, I, I never saw... Because, like, the only line he ever has with her is about their relationship is in the first one when he says, we were barely lovers. So it's clear he doesn't care a lot for her. Like, he cares for her as a person, but not romantically. So I don't know why they leaned into that so much. But I do love... He, he gets pulled in so many different directions in this film. So it is neat to see him grow in a non-typical fashion. Right. Let's go towards Brendan. We'll go right around the table. Sounds good. Uh, That's left. Shut it's up. still around the table. <laughs> it's my left. The thing was, I'm trying. I'm a little bit trying to think again what his arc really is because he, he does he does make his peace with his feelings about Christine, but I guess that's because he realizes, I guess, with his interactions with Chavez that there are other types of either either getting how to get over your trauma because you know or the idea that there are other loves to be open to and not saying he's going to be a romantic relationship with with Chavez's character but oh, the I, yeah I know right but more that like okay I can have somebody else you know as a you know a surrogate daughter or a surrogate student that I can feel protective about and again I guess and and probably more so her her character her what she goes through helps him see that no you have to Everything you've done, you know, sacrifice, you know, sacrificing your career, you know, you know, giving up Christine, becoming a superhero, giving up the Time Stone, gets me to this point here to then move forward, and that's because that's his message to hers. And hey, I think he'd be like, oh yeah, I gotta kind of take that medicine too. But uh, I, I, again, I, I thought he was he was fun to watch. It was interesting to see him. How and I think another thing with him too, I think where he re- like reflects with Scarlet Witch is. How far into the abyss can you look into and still come back okay? Which we will find out in later versions of him, I'd say. Or mm-hmm. later, uh, not, I can't say later versions anymore with all the multiverse things going on. In the future episodes or the future movies or future appearances we have of Doctor Strange. All right. You can see just how black his fingerprints get. Yeah, seriously. Really easy to lift those then. Yeah. Uh, Shawnee. Sorry. For me, it was. Again, the, the first movie came out, well, like six years ago, and basically Doctor Strange has been kind of like a minor character in, in his other appearances. So to get him back as the lone uh, you know, star of the movie was interesting. And seeing his, you know, starting off with the wedding of Christine, you could see he's obviously, you know, upset that he's no longer with her, that they really play into that, that he regrets, you know, what happened between them. And I feel like him with uh, America, it's it's kind of like that. You get a little bit of that Batman and Robin, you mm-hmm. know, like Dick yeah. Grayson, like this is his Dick Grayson. And, you know, I love the scene at the beginning where, you know, she tells him like, yeah, he was going to kill me. And Doctor Strange is like, I wouldn't do that. And, and she's like, well, how many other Doctor Stranges have you found? And he's like, well, they all, they were all going to kill me. And it's just so to see his character progress from what you think he could be to the end of the movie where, you know, basically he, you know, t- shows her how to, you know, gain her powers and she eventually wins and beats Scarlet Witch. It, it was good. I like that. Yeah. Ronnie? So I'm probably going to be on the 
the only one on the complete opposite of everyone else. I did not like Doctor Strange at all. I thought it was played very safely. You guys talked, or Rob talked about his character arc. It was the same exact character arc we saw in No Way Home. You kind of knew he was going to come around to it at the end, just like he did with Spider-Man. I thought it was just, uh, with this movie, everything was so just, oh, this is going to happen next. It happened. Oh, this is going to happen. It happened. <laughs> like, getting ahead of ourselves. I knew Wanda was going to be the bad person, the antagonist the whole time. You know, like, I, it was just, I just, it was just, it's, everything was, like, there for it. And it was just, all right, I know what's going to happen with this movie. Nope, you knew that. You Doctor knew that Strange. before the movie came out. You knew that you, you had a good hunch that Wanda was going to be the bad guy. Because yes. I don't know how. I was, you can't see my face. I was shocked. Like I, this is the first time I've heard anybody say they thought that she was going to be the bad guy. I thought she was going to be the bad guy. I thought yeah. she was going to be an yeah, antagonist. I, I didn't I, think she was going to be the main antagonist. Yeah, going back and seeing some of the trailers and commercials, I could, I could see, like, because I, you know, I went dark on a lot of that stuff. Uh, I could see how people could figure that out. So yeah. I, I, I see that as possible. Yeah. So for me, I I enjoyed Doctor. I do agree with Ronnie that his arc is very similar to No Way Home, where basically it's you know the the kid's not right or you know we do it my way, blah blah blah. And then at the end, he's like you know he has that moment with Peter Parker. He's like you know if you do this, all the people that love you, we won't we won't remember you. Like yeah. it, it's very. It's very reminiscent. I do en- I did enjoy the idea of how dark he would be willing to go for the right reasons cuz basically they they say that every Doctor Strange goes is like the bad guy. So he was almost a secondary antagonist this whole time where like every person like Christine from 838 says it she's like, you know, in every world it's it's you. It's and like the Illuminati even says it they're like you're the reason that this always happens. It's always a Doctor Strange. So I thought it was an interesting, but again, there it felt like there were no consequences whatsoever. Maybe we'll see them in the next movie with him struggling with whatever the dark hole did to him, but because uh, obviously he just gains an eye, so yeah. we don't really no, know that's anything. A good thing or not. I know, right? We don't, but the, the idea is that the the in the comics, the eye of Agamotto in the it was supposed will give somebody a third eye as part of the effect, and that's also a, a very. Yeah. common traditional you know an eastern philosophy yes. belief yeah. you know the third eye it's nothing nothing new nothing not inherently evil you know, the movie makes it paint out it's evil because of our conflict with sinister strange yeah and the association that and then the even the way the movie ends with the musical tones and apparently the history of Raimi's ability of making either bittersweet or unexpected bad endings and in some regard or unhappy endings it was a very Raimi ending when yes you know he's walking down the street he's all happy just fixed the watch he's wearing a scarf and a all right (laughs) Melanie goes what kind of shirt is he wearing I was like really that's what you're concerned about and then obviously he drops to the ground screaming because of this third eye so it very very Raimi very drag me to hell uh, evil dead style so So, there's some stuff I've seen that talks about how you know the, the the ancient one was trying to open his open your eye meaning the the third eye and whatnot so it's still it's kind of split the way the film portrays it it seems as if this is a bad thing but then the the cut scene afterwards you're like so it's not that bad we don't know well it's interesting that you bring back the ancient one and all them because Caecilius and the ancient one when they tapped into the dark dimension they got a a distinct mark on on the same spot it wasn't in the third eye yeah but it was uh like almost like a tattoo where they they were drawing their power from somewhere they weren't supposed to be. So we'll see what happens. There's they're going to make another one. You know, it made Doctor it, Strange will return. Yeah, they did yeah. five hundred million, I think, in their first week. So like it's yeah. it's gonna do just fine. So but they're sitting at five fifty two point one. Five fifty two. So we're not gonna go character by character because obviously then we'll be here for another three hours. So let's. We're going to go around the room and just some of your thoughts about things that you really enjoyed and things that you really didn't enjoy. So I'm going to start and we'll go with the opposite way. So that way everybody's got a chance to kind of think about their thoughts. So one thing I really liked, I loved Wanda at it. When she, no, like you we took chime mine. in a little bit. <laughs> no, like when, when they're having their first initial conversation and I, I did love the dialogue of, you know, there are other Avengers. Well, between the the Archer with a bad mohawk and yeah. the various bug themed superheroes, I figured I'd come to the most powerful magic user on the on the planet. I really enjoyed that scene. It's it's tense. It builds up, and then there's payoff where she accidentally says America's name, and he, even Mel stops. She's like, 
he never said her name. I yeah. did the same thing to him. Uh, like, Wait a minute. <laughs> it, it was really, and she has a great point where she's like, when you break the rules, you're considered a hero. But when I do it, I'm the villain. It yeah. doesn't seem fair. Because yeah. Doctor Strange did break a lot of rules. He did do things he wasn't supposed to do. Even just giving up the time stone, technically he betrayed his oath. And he's not the Sorcerer Supreme. I really enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy the uh, attack on Kam- on Kamataj. Yeah. I enjoyed it when Wanda was really doing like her magic stuff. Like when she comes out of the gong, all yeah. like the ring style, oh, it was yeah. terrifying. <laughs> This movie has some scary imagery and some yeah, really intense absolutely. imagery, and I dug it. It was really good. Wanda was a great villain, and yeah. I, I would have. I, I hope she's not dead. You know, obviously we didn't see her actually die in her moment of redemption. Yeah, but um, she was fantastic. He was Benedict Cumberbatch does a great job. America Chavez was a lot of fun. She was a great character. She made sense. You you understood like she has a power that she can't control. She's almost like oh maybe God, the next yeah. maybe the next Stop jump will, <laughs> maybe the next jump will be the she one was, back home. Yeah. Chavez the character was a lot better than I was expe- <laughs> expecting it to be. I was very pleasantly surprised with how they did her. I will say though, my biggest disappointment was the Illuminati. I was very. <laughs> It was really cool, and when Reed Richards was the one thing that was spoiled, that scene oh, was actually put. Sorry. Yeah, that scene was actually put on TikTok while I was scrolling, and of oh, course, no. dummy, I was like, "I'm gonna, w- oh no!" <laughs> but I was very disappointed, and I hope it wasn't just a stunt casting for uh, John Krasinski, like you know, just because it's a cameo in this one, you know, I thought we were movie. Saying one thing good. With, with things that we like, things we didn't like. I said things I, that I liked. Going back, going to John Krasinski, I don't know if we're going to see him as, as Reed Richards. We will. Because remember, you know, different variants can look like different things. No, That's why not, we had three different Spider-Men. Yeah, no, but not not according to this. All the Stranges looked alike. All the Christines looked alike. They all, Everybody looked like the other person, Mordo. So I think that we're going to get John Krasinski as... I Mr. hope Fantastic. so. I, w- I would be okay with it. His costume looked surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, the, the very little effects we saw of his powers, which can be very wonky. Yeah. Um, when we did our Fantastic Four episode, we talked about it. This but, looked um, great. In this yeah, one, though. It looked pretty good. Yeah. So those are just some of the things that I like, some of the things that I didn't like. And uh, we're going to go to Ronnie. Oh, who, hold so, Paul, can I go back to you for a second? Yes. Talk about Wanda. I saw her as... One of the best villains up there with Michael B. Jordan's Killmonger because of how empathetic she was. Right. Did you like her for some of the same reasons? I liked her because, A, she was – you understood her. She had Mm -hmm. solid reasoning. Rob, you're a parent. You would understand completely the idea of losing your children and then the ability to get them back. Like When we were walking out of there, Lauren turned to me and she's like, I understand her. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. And also the fact that she is so powerful and so just like an unstoppable force with the right motivations, yes. compelling, compelling yeah. stuff. Also feels like so, as a villain, she has the, the same power level. In theory, we're talking about magic <coughs> with Doctor Strange. You know, that's a pretty high power on the power scale. So you have an enemy that at least meets the, the protagonist's uh, power scale. Yeah. And also their, their visuals were different enough so that it wasn't yeah. boring. Yeah. All right, Ronnie, you're up. So my my number one favorite thing about this movie was Elizabeth Olsen. I think she was the only person that that we had a lot of on-screen time that actually was very good at what they were doing. I did not like what what's her face Joe I'm going to butcher it, Joe Chili Gomez. I thought her acting was horrendous. Uh, the character was good, but I think just her delivery of things just i did not like her at all and then you know like you said krasinski i think having krasinski was amazing i'm happy that did not get spoiled for me i'm sorry paul that got spoiled for you because i know when when he came on like i i got goosebumps so i was like oh my god like dream casting fan cast right there they better go with this if not i'm not gonna watch the fantastic four movie at all, <laughs> I've been yeah, for this Ron podcast. When, yeah, you know when they brought him on, and everyone in the theater clapped. Yeah, nice. like yeah. we were all like, "Oh my god, yeah, Jim from the office." No. Yeah, you know, again, like I alluded to earlier, too. Another thing I did like was the visual. For the most part, some some of it was a little jarring. I did not like the look of like Zombie Strange and everything. I thought mm. th- that could have been done a little bit better and hitter, everything. It was hit or miss. Yeah. But and then did it, did it remind you of though in Dark Man when he's able to talk? Yes. About yep. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought about. I was like, I was like, this is literally just Doctor Strange as Dark Man, essentially. You know? But the one thing I would say about Wanda 
that, you know, you guys talked about, oh, you know, I, I get what she's, why she wanted to do that and everything. I do, but I don't at the same time. So I get wanting to have your child back, you know, as a father myself too, you know, a stepfather, still same thing. Yes, I would do anything to bring my child back. God forbid something happened. However, would I go to another world to steal the child? No. What I would do is I try to figure out how to go back in time so I have this and not have my child die or whatever because of whatever it is. I don't think I would steal my child from my other self because then now my other self doesn't have their child and now that whole process just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. That's it's essentially almost like an eye for an eye. You that's know? why you kill your other self. <laughs> I think that from what I was a little bit I read up that's maybe the the idea is that might be the influence of the dark hold on her of like yeah. you know, showing you this thing and then nudging her to taking those steps to, you know, yes. kill the other self. But yeah. Nudge, yeah nudge. I, I don't There's know. There's also an inherent flaw in the whole thing in that those children are fake. Yes, like but we don't, we don't be. know in we don't know in this in the eight three eight world because they didn't have their powers either. They just started throwing things at Wanda. Yeah, like, right. so it, it could be different where they were actually born, and because we don't see Vision either, which is also a very right. big letdown that that no Vision, no White Vision, because he's still floating around. There's no closure yeah. with that. I I thought he would have been a much better option to kind of snap. Wanda back into it than her kids being scared of her. Yeah, but uh, Ronnie, anything else that you want to add? Again, I I, I think just the, again the the top things that hit it for me that made this movie a pretty good movie was you know Elizabeth Olsen and the Wanda stuff and everything, and then just really the uh, the, the cameos. I I don't like Christine Palmer. She, I don't get why she was in this at all. It didn't add anything. It all, it really the Christine stuff took away from really the movie because it had nothing to do with it. So they could have filled that with something else. I don't know what, but something else. And I really would like a lot more Wong. Yeah. I, I to to be honest with you, like I think he is one of the best side characters that we have in the MCU. And I think he needs his time to shine. He got his bow. Yeah, he got his bow at, at the end. But like uh, to me, like he's a sorcerer supreme. He should be a, a little bit more like out there. Like uh, we need to see more of Wong in the future. Brendan looks like he wants to say something. I, well, no, I, th- I think yeah, I was gonna make some jokes about like you know you know sorcerer supreme Wong the movie, but I think you you kind of beat me there a little bit. Yeah. We did see him a little bit in uh, Shang Chi, so you know his integral. Yes, I guess his side betting or fi- batch fixing can maybe you know. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yep. All right, Shawnee, you're up. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna agree with Ronnie on Elizabeth Olsen. I think being probably the best part of this movie, she definitely continues her tour de force from from WandaVision and from you know. Infinity War, and you really just see this how this character has grown from Age of Ultron forward, mm. and she's really picked it up as an. I mean, she's a very good actress. I have and such I, a crush on her. Oh, yeah. yes, it, you know she is excellent, and I loved the Sam Raimi touches in this movie. I mean, as you said, the scene where like she's crawling out like ring style. Yeah, and, I mean, they promoted this movie back when it was being filmed. Like this was going to be a true horror movie, and was it a true horror movie? No, but there was definite horror imagery that Raimi brought to this yeah, that she, he didn't do in like the Spider-Man films. When she snaps Xavier's neck in the oh oh, oh my dude, God. this I want to know how close I want to know if there's a I want to know how far he went and maybe if obviously the MPAA had to be like uh, tone it back a little, man. You know, this is a this is a Marvel movie, but yeah. I mean. I I enjoyed the cameos. I was hoping for more. I don't know. Don't ask me what I was hoping for. I don't know. I was just with multiverses. I was expecting maybe something. Maybe to- Toby Maguire mm-hmm. Spider Man. No, no. I was I was hoping maybe Chris Evans. I was hoping maybe we see Chris Evans. Maybe we see some of the other adventures. Maybe we see Scarlett Johansson. Something. Yeah. I mean, we we got Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Is, I love the John Krasinski as Reed Richards. I mean that if you. That was the smartest thing they've ever done. That they actually did that. Now I disagree with Ronnie. I just have a I, I have a scare that that was just to placate to the fans, and we are not getting yeah. John Krasinski or Emily Blunt in the Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. You better but be I wrong. I think that was strictly a fans. We were tired of hearing this. Boom! Here it is. He's dead. <laughs> you gotta stop bugging us. Yeah. 
But Game man, was go away. her her taking care of the Illuminati? That was brutal. Yeah, I yeah. mean, she basically splits Captain Carter in half, and you know, basic it was it that was really interesting. Brutal. It yeah. really was, that, and that kept the rating down. Not actually not seeing, seeing it, it in half, in, that impl- kept the rating implying down. Implying it was pretty out there, oh, and yeah. as as you know, as you said, with the neck breaking of Xavier. But overall, you know, Rachel McAdams. She's a fantastic actress, but like she just has nothing to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, just there's no point to her even being in the movie. Even in the last scene, he she jumps with him and she's outside. Yeah, like at least have her inside. You know, <laughs> I, I think it would have been a little more interesting to have her watching the two of them go back and forth. Instead, she's just standing outside. I'm like, why is she there? <laughs> All right, why? Sean, her thumbs. Sean, Sean who would win in a fight? Musical Sinister Strange or Todd? From uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. Oh. the World when they have the base battle. Todd. Is Todd the... Brandon Routh. Uh, Brandon Routh. When they have the base battle and yeah. they fight each other with the bases. God. So, what, what, all right. So let's rephrase Musical that. Strange. Musical Strange versus... Plus, I actually did like that scene. It, it was fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did like that scene. I enjoyed that. But overall, I... I was happy with the movie. It didn't blow me away. It, you know, but I liked Sam Raimi's approach to it. It was something different. Huh. But I also agree with you guys that really it brought us nowhere in the multi in 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 the MCU. I have no idea where the MCU is going after this. You know, we'll talk about the the ending credit scene and where that will bring us. I'm sure after Brendan talks about yep. what he thinks. All right, we're going to Brendan. And don't forget, we have Rob after me. Oh, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm trying to look out for you there, Rob. Some of the things you guys mentioned, I think I, I also liked about the movie. I think for me, uh, some of the things that kind of stood out, I think were just more different moments. I definitely think the, not the first half of the attack, Kataraj, or I already forgot how to pronounce that. that, 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 for, that, that Kamatash. That, Kamatash, thank you. But when, yeah, right, when she goes into the mirror <laughs> dimension and realizes how she can bend it to her will and use it to her advantage, that was really cool in terms of the aspects of horror. I think he hit the right level of it because some of these things that I when I was described to some friends, it would be the same level of horror that you would see. I would say is how I felt as a kid in Batman Returns, or the the final scene in Indiana Jones and the and uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark mm-hmm. when everybody's face gets melted up. It's like that kind of level of horror, which I think is the right level for what we had here. I thought some of the scenes of when. Before he's poisoned, and, and, and Mordo is explaining everything in the way that that scene is set up, when you as inter being intercut with Scarlet Witch, starting to do her spell to do the dream walking. I thought that was really cool to see. The musical battle was pretty awesome. Just even doing those little bits with how the music changes. I think it went from like the something really joyful to something that's very much more evil sounding, mm-hmm. which was cool. And I think somebody pointed out actually too is that it for so. Our strange attacks with notes, and how does the evil strange defend himself by putting out uh, a staff with uh, the bars on it, which is how you capture notes and music. So I thought yeah. those little subtleties. I thought that was really cool. The little jingle of the X Men cartoon theme when Xavier shows up. That was like, oh my god, they actually did that. That was really cool. So those those were the kind of the cool moments that I really I had a lot of fun with that stuff. Uh, I think, and actually another small, small tidbit I pointed out I thought was really cool too, is that the reason why we get the weird zombie cloak at the end is because Sorcerer Supreme, because Wong didn't actually go to the mountain himself, he had to be carried there by Wanda. Since no Sorcerer Supreme can actually go there, you have to be carried by some alternative meats, which I thought was really neat. Mm-hmm. My small gripes that I really had at times, I thought the CGI in the very first scene was like really just jarring, and with, with a shot as you're like, the uh, later on it looks great like the little nexus place looks pretty cool and some of the other stuff looks great but i'm like in the very beginning like uh, they rushed through this a little bit this looks really jarring and whatnot and i did not get the point the need for having a hand-to-hand fight between two wizards at one point i understand that you know that at this point dr strange is in handcuffs to prevent his stuff but i'm like really need a hand-to-hand they just want to try to throw in a fight scene like do more magic things. What would be kind of cool to see that? That's what I would have wanted. Mm-hmm. I think that's really it in terms of what I really love that you guys haven't mentioned. And gripes, I think. All so. right. Rob, you're up. Oh, wait. We ran out of time on Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. Really, really no. So, no, I'm good. I think you guys covered it all. No, okay. Uh, oh, this is scary. Right. Whoa. And so, <laughs> such any ratings? Just, no, give it, just give him a second. Oh, my God. Okay, my favorite part of the whole thing, I think, was Sam Raimi. I loved everything he brought to it. Now, I having recently rewatched No Way Home, 
I was struck by just how bland it was and how it pandered to fan service. Like it was, it didn't have any style to it. It was neat seeing the three Peters and seeing them, you know, doing their thing. But it just, overall, there was no sense of ownership from the director. Whereas with this, it was very much like, like Sean was saying, Sam Raimi film. Moments where, you know, like, gosh, with uh, Wanda coming through all the reflections and they had to cover up the puddles, that is so Sam Raimi. The, the, when Wanda is trapped and Professor Xavier finds her, that's so Sam. Zom the zombie with the cloak of, uh, of evil shadows, holy cow. I mean, this is deeply scary. Like, even down to the, the eye... We, and we said this pre in a previous episode, uh, just about every Sam Raimi movie has an eye-popping scene. Uh, where somebody's eye shoots out, and I was shocked to see it came from that huge creature that they pulled its eyeball out. I was amazed with how far they pushed it. I think Drag Me to Hell still might have pushed it a little further because there were some like truly gross moments from that. I, I'm thinking of the dinner scene from Drag Me to Hell, whereas at least with this one, there wasn't that gross out level, but there was some really intense horror stuff. So I, I think Sam Raimi is the real, you know, the goat here because he just he brings so much to it um and then for me so as a result of that then you know dr strange's overall arc and all of his story was almost kind of like a little secondary it was more like i want to be thrilled like this was something that thrilled me like moment to moment even just let that opening scene uh, where he battles the giant eyeball creature i mean that felt so much like the doc ock fight from spider-man 2 just down to so many angles so it was, it was for me it was all sam raimi my weak parts i got i gotta say and i agree i forget who said it i think it was sean america the girl who played america oh, no it was ronnie the girl who played america chavez I did not like her at all i yeah. thought she was an amateur with this i thought she was very like just she just didn't she, some of my kids pointed this out she was very disney like she was pulled from a disney movie especially at the end where she's like i just needed to believe in myself and then she's doing her fights and kids and everything hmm. I, I didn't like her at uh, all i mean it, it's marvel yeah. marvel is disney there I you know. go i thought she was the weakest part they um, disney I was watched disappointed it. that we only really spent time in like what two universes uh, Pretty much. This is a multiverse. We really didn't see. You know, we, well, yeah, two is multi. Splattered, he splattered through. Two is multi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he splattered through a whole bunch of them all at once. And I'd love to slow that down and watch it. Were we pain at one point? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that he's a cartoon at one point. Yeah. Just, yeah, it was fantastic. But I, I would have liked to have seen a couple different universes where we could take some time and examine the rules of each universe. And Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Really, he's the best part of this, the whole thing. Pizza you said Papa. Sam Raimi was. Pizza Papa. <laughs> Pizza Papa. Pizza Papa. But uh, see, to me, though, uh, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell are one and the same. That's <laughs> fair. They're a package deal. That's fair. Um, okay, you know what I was really disappointed in? There was a serious lack of Ted Raimi in this picture. He has shown up in every other of Raimi's pictures, and he didn't have his brother at all in here. I noticed that, anything. yeah. You got two yeah. out of the three at least, okay? Yeah. yeah. Now, but I, I will say I would rather rewatch this than Spider Man No Way Home. Blasphemy. No. <laughs> well, I, again, well, you were saying about the director, there was no stamp on No Way Home. He's just I, a Sam Raimi fan. That's no, I, mean. I understand that too, but I think Marvel depends on the property or what they are in that point because again you would say correct me if I'm wrong anywhere else, but what, the Russos were the first one that kind of had their own stamp then it was Taika Watiti with right. Ragnarok and I definitely right. saw it was Sam Raimi but things before then they were like I would actually argue James Gunn in Guardians oh, of James the Galaxy. Gunn, James but, Gunn. but okay, but that's a great example because that's a property that if you were to name okay you're going to make a Marvel you're going to start a Marvel Cinematic Universe what are your top pick, top three picks they are not up there so they're like, you know something? We'll let the director do his thing. We don't really care. We, we figure this will be, you know, whereas some of the other stuff they're a little bit stricter about. Doctor Strange, are like, he's good, but we, this is the second movie. Maybe we'll be more loose. And Sam Raimi, we, we maybe, they felt that he, they liked what he could do. Whereas somebody who doesn't have either his uh, repertoire or they're like, no, we're a lot more strict. This particular story we want to be really strict about because we have big plans for this idea. So I think... Like that. 
Yeah, I, I like. I was wondering what this movie would have looked like if Scott Derrickson were allowed to have continued to direct it, and I just don't. I think it would have been a kind of bland. Like Doc, the first Doctor Strange is it's good, it's serviceable, it does its job. Yeah. And I think that's would have been a step down from this. Where whereas right now in Sam Raimi's hands it's a step up. And again, it goes back to that whole, you know, like Brendan's saying, we don't really know how much control Marvel has over the product. Like clearly, when it came to Ant Man. Edgar Wright, they were like, no, you're wrong for the job. Where I would have loved to have seen an Edgar Wright ant. That would have been, been fun. Amazing. The yeah. sound effects alone. Oh. Yeah, the sound design. Now, do you, do you think we'll get another Sam Raimi MCU movie? I think so. I think they'll throw money at him, whether he takes it or not. I don't know. See, I don't think he will. He's been retired, you know, for a while. He's yeah. Kind of, Oz the Great and Powerful was his last film. Huh? So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, to be honest, I don't. I don't think so. I I think he should walk away right now. To be yeah, honest with you, not 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 be not because I I thought he did a terrible job because I don't think that. No. But I I think he he's good at the horror aspect, yeah. and I don't really see the MCU really doing any more horror. This was a nice right. horror quote unquote film, and I don't think you need his touch on anything else because he's not that he's bad at the drama or whatever but he's his his his, his niche is horror and he does that well i i would be kind of surprised if we get him back i i I agree with you ronnie you know this was just a fun little nod to the you know the horror fans of sam raimi evil dead drag me to hell because i mean we got Sam Raimi already with Spider-Man. We got the yeah. commercial Sam Raimi. And yes, the first two Spider-Mans were very good. I thought this was kind of like, you know, fans... It's very similar to, you know, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in No Way Home. You bring back Sam Raimi and it's like, oh, 20 years later, we love Sam Raimi. Yeah. You know, 10 years ago, it was like, oh, we can't stand what Sam Raimi did to the Spider-Man franchise. Right. But now it's, we love Sam Raimi. So It's like the Phantom I agree. Menace in an Attack of the Clones. No, you're right. <laughs> I mean, year, you know, years change your opinion on things. And, you know, I agree with Ronnie. It's like, do we need Sam? Unless Sam's going to do a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, another one of those, I don't see yeah. really him yeah. or the MCU really going together on another film unless we get another Doctor Strange and maybe Benedict Cumberbatch is just like, I'll only do it if Sam Raimi directs it. I mean, that's yeah. that's the only way I can see it I, happening. I agree with you. I think Sam Raimi should stop while, quit while he's ahead and, and while the, it's in good hands. He and and, and on a high note. Well, I, yeah, you know, the, the only higher he could possibly go is if, you know, if if Marvel does decide to go in the direction of having a Pizza Papa trilogy with a six episode Disney series, I think. So, Brendan, much. what are your thoughts? Well, I was going to say, if you want to do the more <laughs> cynical version of this, is that Sam shouldn't come back unless he can copy something else he's done. Because I've seen some stuff that said that basically this is a weaker version or rehashed version of Spider-Man 2. Essentially, where the ending scene is a hero who redeems himself. I'm not going to die a monster while something collapses on top of them of their own making. You have, you know, something that's something evil talking in their head, making them do taking a normal good person and turn into an evil person. You know, and I think you could. And you, you were saying there were some similarities of the fight in the beginning with the the one eyed monster that was very reminiscent of Doctor Octopus. So that's a cynical take. I still again I have fun with this movie and I was glad to see all these little touches that are Raimi's touches. But if you want to be, uh, that's me being like being devil's advocate cynic right now. I still had yeah. fun with everything. All right, <laughs> yeah, so I had so many dark man like vibes from this too, yeah. like left and right. And, and and I think this was a better dark man almost. You know, it was very similar to that. Yeah. All right, so Star City Ratings. We've already said most of our good and bad, so we're just going to give a number. We're literally going to go right around the table, same order. I'll start. It'll go me, Ronnie, Sean, Brendan, Rob, and just say your number, and next person goes. I'm going to go three. I'll agree, three. It was between a three and 2.5, but three. I'll go three. I'll go three and a half. I'll up that and go four. Well, oh, if it wasn't oh, Sam Raimi, oh my god, <laughs> he's allowed to like it. If Sam Raimi did Moon Knight, Rob would have given it a better review. <laughs> By the way, you can check out Rob's review. It, I, you know, as much as I bust balls, I love reading Rob's reviews, and he oh, did do a full uh, series review of Moon Knight on our website. So make sure you guys check that out. All right, so that's going to wrap us up. We do have two Fan Feedback Fridays, so I'm going to run through them really quick because obviously we did miss a week. So the first one was, if you could travel the multiverse, what kind of alternate reality would you like to visit? 
And we only had two responses just because it was a busy day, I guess. Let's see. You're welcome. I responded, I think. A universe where Ronnie is Green Lantern. Oh, God, I hate him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My first re- – this is from our friend John, again from the uh, Hey Pal, What's New podcast. My first reaction was one where superheroes are real, but the damage and destruction that comes with superheroes is something no I'll boys. pass on and go on with uh, one where galaxy-wide peace has been achieved. Oh, that's nice, John. Look at you. Look at that guy. Look at but that guy. But I, I do want to do an episode at one point about why – superheroes would suck in real life. That'd be a lot of fun. Maybe when The Boys comes out, because that's coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But uh, And then uh, this week, if you were to travel to an alternate universe, what would be a funny, subtle change? I.e. going red on going on red, not green. Let's see. Uh, instead of cash money payments, uh, instead of cash money, payments were all made in funny dances. That's, yeah. That was me. Let's see. One where pigeons feed the humans. That's nice. From our friend John. Where everyone is three feet tall and being taller than four feet is not the norm. (laughs) So weird. Imagine going to that world. I am God. Let's see. Con men become politicians. Oh, wait. Silly me. That's already a thing. Ah, meta. Uh And get transported to a black and white universe. However, you and only you can see it in color. All right. Pleasantville? Pleasantville. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for tonight. First and foremost, we want to thank Brendan for uh, taking the time. And Brendan, how can people find your uh, YouTube channel again? One, thanks for having me. It was a blast being on this podcast. If you want to look into my content, if you're a Magic the Gathering fan, go on YouTube, do a, a search for B L N D B A T 8719, Blind Bat 8719. There's where I, ho- uh, I upload YouTube videos of me playing Magic the Gathering. And yeah, come and check me out. Subscribe, help me grow. And yeah, thanks again, guys, for having me. This was a blast. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. Thank you. Uh, you can also find more of our content on themisfitfaction.com or basically if you type in The Misfit Faction on any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you'll find us and you'll find more of our content. So make sure you guys check us out. If you guys are listening to us, make sure you hit that download button and also any comments, subscribes, reviews, they make a big difference, especially in the the vast array of other podcasts. We love hearing from you guys and getting positive feedback. So make sure you guys do that too. So you at, can thank uh, Sean from Cinematic Adventures. For I I was get, I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> if you want more content from the Misfit Faction, you can also find our other podcasts, not only MF Uncensored, but also the Cinematic Adventures podcast, hosted by me and Sean. And we are in the middle of Star Wars month, so make oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, if you guys are Star Wars fans, you take a listen. We just did uh, Attack of the Clones and uh, Phantom Menace earlier this month. So that's going to wrap us up. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Ronnie. Rob, go. I'm Rob. <laughs> I'm Sean. And I'm Brendan. And we will be back in a flash. Smorgasbord. See ya.